Cube drop the ball, and he just says, it's not about you in the first place. All I've asked you to do is open your mouth and say these words. I'll do the rest, okay? And so, so I've, that was my prayer today. God, don't let me feel nothing. I don't like that either, dude. I'm telling you straight up, I don't like it. I want that excitement. I want that joy just welling up in me that says, you know what? I feel it. I'm emotional. I feel it. Boy, I pray to God, by next year, this time, you see an emotionalist, Brother Thorne, I'm talking about void of my emotions. I don't mind his emotions. His are good. My emotions steer me all the wrong ways. I'm telling you right now, my emotions say, you need to do this. You know, they don't call me Brother Thorne. My emotions calls me Bill, okay? There ain't no brother to it because it's eaten from a different tree, okay? Anyway, I'm going on. I'm rambling. I got you all standing there. Sorry about that. Ephesians 3 and 17. I'm going to get my scriptures out here. Three, Ephesians 3 and 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being, what's that word say? Rooted and grounded in love. You may be seated. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, that ye, that why ye, that's you being rooted and grounded in love. The message title today is Grafted into the Gift. Just going to take a little time here today. All I want to do is share what he's given me to share with you. Because I believe this. If it blessed me, it can bless you. But I bought a house in 2005, October 2005. And I moved in after an extensive remodel in 2006. I, I owned a house for a solid year before I spent one night in it. You'll say, isn't that kind of weird to own a house? Trust me, it needed extensive remodel. Okay, the gentleman before me lived in it 27 years, and he was a bachelor. And I don't know what you can see what the bachelor pads look like, but I'm not sure that they understand the ministry of a vacuum, Okay. Some bachelor pads out there don't, don't have the ministry of understanding cleanliness, okay? So I had an extensive, extensive cleaning job to do here. So the power company comes by one day, and the power company, there's a knock on the door. I'm up in the attic, Stephen's downstairs, and he said, Dad, he said, there's a guy at the door here, he uh, wants to talk to you. So I go down there, and uh, sure enough, it's the guy from the power company. And he's got a, he's got a gas meter in his truck. He's going to change out the gas meter in my house, okay? And, and it, this is kind of cool here. And uh, so he, he came over and it, he says, you know, he said, they've sent me out here twice. Remember, I'm not living there. So the gas usage isn't right. They've already changed the meter out once. Now he's coming to change it out again because they know something's wrong. They think somebody's living in the house, okay? Because it's got all the, you know, it's, it's, it's got people parked there sometimes. But nobody has resided in the house for a solid year. It sat vacant and remodeling stage by stage by stage. And I explained that to the gentleman. I said, you know, I says, I wish you could have caught me sooner. I said, there's nothing wrong with the gas gauge. I said, I just don't live here. And this is what the Lord shared with me. He said, there was a thought. He said, imagine you're given the keys to a new house. Everybody just hold your hand out like this, and you've got the keys to a new house right there. Just grab it tightly. There you go. Okay. But you never take ownership of it. Imagine not taking ownership of something that was given to you. You didn't have to pay for it. It was given to you, Sister Cree. Okay. But what we think to ourselves is, well, that'd be strange. You, I had a few strange looks when I said I didn't even live in the house for a solid year. I'm wondering, this is just a thought, I wonder if there's some things that we're supposed to abide in, but we haven't taken ownership of yet. That there's some things that he's given us the keys to, okay? That we haven't quite even tried to see which door it unlocks. And the miracle thing about this is, just revealed to me right now, is 
is see, they got these digital keys. Matter of fact, the realtors now have a phone that they, on their smartphone, they can go up to the realtor box and it automatically opens up through this digital technology now. Ain't that the coolest thing? Okay. So the key, their phone unlocks many, many, many different doors. I got to believe this, that the keys that he gave me doesn't just unlock one door. Come on and I believe it unlocks a whole lot of things. I believe it unlocks more than what I could ever dream. But, but to never live in the gift that was given to you, to never enjoy the price paid by another. Now, I'll be honest here. Okay, Brother Evan, let's say I reach deep down in my pocket, okay? And I pull out some pretty tall cash. And that'd be real deep down there someplace. So I'm pulling out some pretty tall cash and I buy you a gift, okay? Something that you've been wanting in your life. But then you ignore that gift. And you never, ever use it. Because you didn't pay for it. So you feel like you really can't enjoy it like you paid for it yourself, okay? How would you make, how, would, how do you think that make me feel that I mean, I sacrificed. I went down deep. I took, we'll just call it a mortgage payment. Everybody in here got a mortgage? That means, hey, if you're going to own anything in this world, you owe somebody. <laughs> I promise you, that ain't scripture, but that's Brother Thornton 101. You will owe somebody if you own something. So anyway, that's what he just was dealing with me about. Take ownership of it. You know, there's a price paid that you couldn't even pay the price, man. You know, I'm not talking about foreign currency. I'm talking about above all currency. It was purchased with something that you and I couldn't purchase it with. So anyway, I just, I had to share that. But John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, can I share something with you? Now, when I was law rooted and grounded, Oh, I hated that scripture, making, making this grace gospel so easy. They didn't have to earn nothing, okay? You got to come the same way I came. You got to earn this, okay? This has to be something that costs you something, okay? Would you give up for this, okay? Isn't it amazing that now, looking through the eyes of grace and mercy, that this is one of the scriptures that I love the most? that I adore the most because I understand the author a little bit better today than I understood the author. Isn't it amazing how much you think that you know the author until you get to meet him? Have you ever heard somebody's, uh, Brother Tyler, this would be a good one. If nobody's ever seen your picture and they hear your voice on the radio, you know what they're going to try to do? They're going to try to put a, a visual image to the voice. Okay, it's just automatic, right? Well, I was hearing a voice in an Old Testament language but I was not hearing the right voice, okay, of a New Testament love. I wasn't hearing the God of creation say to me, I'm giving you a gift, and I want you to enjoy it. I'm giving you eternal life. In the Old Testament, I never got the revelation of what he did and why he did it. I understood the eye for an eye, though. I'll tell you straight up. I had that one figured out real good. They did me wrong. You know, they, they got it coming back. Okay? But isn't it amazing how that when you hear the voice, you try to get the semblance or the figure with it, but when you get a chance to meet them, when you get a chance to meet them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've missed the Thursday before last, it's a message on 415 about eternal versus temporal. I told the pastor, I said, I'll tell you what. I said, there's been a lot of things you hear, but it's a right now word. Everybody here have that right now word that means something to you? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say it out there the best way as I can. If you've got an hour to spend to where you're wanting answers for whatever question you've got. Remember how I talked about keys opening up different doors? I guarantee the same message that 415 of 21 on a Thursday will unlock whatever situation you've got in your life the same way it unlocked mine and my, and my lock assembly is completely different than yours I would check it out 
I would watch it, please. Matter of fact, it's somebody's reset button. You're saying, well, God, I've been, I've been searching for a reset button. Well, there, here's your reset button. Hallelujah. But see, I want to be whole. Nothing less but whole. Okay? Last, last Sunday, when I was coming to church, he spoke these words to me, just give them a taste. Okay? So much can happen with just a taste of Jesus. When we read David in Psalms 34 and 8, Oh, taste and see. See, you know, we we read that, but if we understood the levels that that can unfold to and how that can apply to your life today, and then a year from now, it'll open up brand new again, and it'll be at a different level. It'll be ministering to you at a much deeper depth. Oh, taste and see. Anybody in here want a greater revelation of the God that's in them? Anybody in here want a ministry that says, you know what, no longer I but Christ in me? I'm talking about that ministry that goes beyond pride that says, oh, look at who I am and what I'm doing. But it's that ministry that says, use me. Let me be the clay. Let me be the vessel that you can pour yourself into. I won't complain. I won't stand there and say, oh, woe is me. But I'll be that vessel that you can pour into and keep pouring into and overflow the sides and overflow me to where what's coming in me eventually hides me. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. But just give them a taste. Ask Jesus to give others a taste. Matter of fact, this is one of those Selah moments. We're just going to close our eyes. Every one of us has somebody that we run into on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. With every eye closed right now, I want you to mean this. I I want you to mean this. Give them a taste, God. Give them a taste, God. However you need to use me to give them that taste, give them a taste, God. Thank you. I appreciate your willingness and obedience to Christ. In Revelations 22 and 16, hallelujah. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. This week, the root really took a meaning. How many times have you ever read a word? That it was just a word, but now it's got a face. Now it's got a flip side to the page, to where root doesn't just mean root, but there's an understanding principle behind that. David was, excuse me, he was the root of David. David means, excuse me, David drawed from this root his nutrients. I am grafted in to something. I am grafted into the one that is life. Now, we can be grafted into a lot of things. And I'm about to explain the whole grafting process to us in real quick terms, okay? But the grafting process, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here, is is you're joined to something that you wasn't born from or grew out of. You're removed from a tree of knowledge of good and evil, Okay? into a tree of life. And you'll say to yourself, well, what's, what, is it really that important what root system I have? I'm grafted into the tree of life. I draw my nutrients from the right tree, not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The right tree produces the right fruit. If we wonder why we have blow-ups in our life, schisms, whatever you want to call them, those times where we say, well, the old man just rose up. (laughs) That old man had a root, and apparently we're not disconnected enough from that root of the old man. There is a new man that's in us, and he's got a root. And I'm I'm talking to you about roots that are amazing. You'll draw things out of these roots that you've never drawn in your life before. 
You'll draw nutrients. A woman at a well one day, she doesn't understand that she's talking to not only a well of living water, but a root system that can show her what eternal life is all about. How many times have we passed up the right root system for the wrong root system? I have. But the grafting process, the upper part is called the scion, S-C-I-O-N, and the root system is called the rootstock. The tree will take on those characteristics of the new root system. The scion and the rootstock should be of the same diameter or size. And he made himself a child. He was birthed through a womb so he could come to you and I the same size and the same shape. So there's a grafting process. It's, it's a little bit more equal, a little bit more understanding in the grafting there. You'll say, why did he have to come? Well, we knew he had to come to die, but he, I, knew, I didn't know he had to come as the same size, the same image, the same shape as mankind. The separation process of the scion. Now this ain't a pretty process. See the scion's that top part that grew on another tree at one time. But now there has to be that separation process. And this is where a little pain's involved. It's never easy just to walk away from something, especially when the roots are pretty deep. If you're cut off of something, First thing you need to do is, God, what has been removed out of my life, okay, and why has it been removed out of my life? Am, am I being joined to the right tree instead of the wrong tree? Is there the wrong fruit being produced in my life? I am the scion, that top section, that gets grafted into a root system of a living God. And all of a sudden... When you get grafted into a root system of a living God, you begin, you, get, you begin to produce the right fruit. Traditions. You'll say, well, what makes up an old root system? Traditions, false teachings, unbelief. You'll say, but Brother Thornton, doesn't everybody have a certain level of unbelief? We do. We do. We do. But he doesn't want us to stay in unbelief. That's why it goes from faith to faith. It never said from unbelief to unbelief. From faith to faith. So you're telling me that my faith can be directly affected by the root system that I'm attached to? The wound Jesus received in his side was for a grafting process. A wound is created into one of the trees, and the other tree, the scion, is inserted into that wound. Okay? Matter of fact, in Isaiah 53 and 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes were he healed. This is one thing I never knew before. There's about 10 different ways you can graft, and one of the ways is they, they peel strips back, and then then you know that when they beat him with that cat of nine tails and they, they're pulling off flesh, and, and I can't even imagine all the, everything that was involved with that. But what if the peeling back of that flesh was a part of that grafting process to where you and I have a place to come into life, be attached to life, okay? I had never looked at it like that. I had never looked at it like the piercing of the side and the removing of the flesh in the back, all those wounds that he had to receive, but understanding that when that tree of life becomes wounded like that, that's an opportunity for a grafting process to take a hold. I had never seen that before. I thought that was kind of neat, so hallelujah. But he was wounded. Thank you, Jesus. But here, now when they wound something, they make it exposed. It's very vulnerable, okay? And now when they tie the two together, the scion comes in with the root system. Now to make that thing, you've got to wrap it tight, okay? And here you've got, in Luke 12 and 2, you've got a baby that shows up. Luke 12 and 2 says, 
and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothing, lying in a manger. And I had never, I had never looked at the wrapping. I just think it's a, a blanket or a covering. It's supposed to be symbolic of, hey, he came in wrapped. And matter of fact, when he left this, he was wrapped. And there was a, all that so that we could just get in there and just become a part of him. Because without that wrapping process, first, if you want to avoid the wounding, you'll never get a wrapping. Okay? That was the original wrapping. Okay? Hallelujah. But the babe was wrapped in John. John, it says right here, it says, uh, John 15 and 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Detached from me. Can I break that down for me? Detached from me, you can't do nothing. Okay? If a man abide not in me, he cast forth as a branch. Now, it's weird that he's, he's referring to man here as a branch. And is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. But if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you'll ask. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. See, these are things that I was, I was reading on the surface. But it, this, is, this is the thing when, when you get grafted or you get wounded, because you've got to get wounded to get grafted, he can start to explain this stuff to you. He can start letting you know that I didn't just wound you to wound you. Okay? I didn't let this happen to you just so I can say it happened to you. Okay? There's a purpose for the wounding. And if you understand the purpose for the wounding, you understand there's healing shortly to follow. Okay? And, and, and so, just raise your hand slightly if you've been wounded in your short time with Jesus Christ. Because I promise you, if you ain't been, it's a coming. Because <laughs> he wants you grafted. He wants you drawn from the right root system. And you'll say, well, I hate pain. Well, I don't think anybody loves pain, but I can tell you this. My grace. If we, if we really got a hold of this one, my grace is sufficient. It's the wrapping. That grace, it does the wrapping. That grace holds things together. You'll say, I don't even know how he's held me together. It's the grace that he's wrapping around the wound. And it's holding you together. And you'll say, Brother Thorne, aren't you, aren't you reaching and stretching? Ask him. If I'm lying to you right now, ask him, please. Is it your grace that holds me together, God, with you? Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. But attachment is key. The Father is glorified by us bearing much fruit. He doesn't take the time to draw you in unto himself, to attach you to himself without one day. There's a much bearing of fruit. Because, see, that's when you know the life is getting from the root system to the very tip of those branches. It's because now that you're connected and everything is, everything is, you've been accepted. Now, not every tree is going to accept every branch, but you've been accepted in the beloved. Okay? That accepting is, hey, the graft went right. The graft took. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. But Romans 11, Romans 11 and 15 for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be? The receiving of them be, but life from dead. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest to the root and the fatness of the olive tree. 18, boast not against the branches. I'm going to say it one more time. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. You're not attached. He's saying, if you're boasting, you ain't attached. Get it? He said, but, but, the, but the root be, thou wilt say then the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. 
and thou standest by faith. Not Be not high-minded, but fear. All I can say is, you'll, there'll be people out there today that get to hear this. They'll say, well, that was the natural Jew that they're talking about, and that really don't pertain to us here, Brother Thornton. I'm going to tell you straight up, it does. Because, see, we got a tree that we was attached to heavily, and I'm still trying to break off. Man, it's weird. You ever get those vines? We had a church over there on Church Street. Vines would grow up the side of the church. You'd spray them with killer. Here they come again. Vines growing up the side of the church. There is a specific characteristic of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. It searches always to get you back connected to that root system. You follow what I'm saying? It is continually searching. And do you know what it searches with? Pride. It just, if there's any pride in you, it's going to find it. Okay, can I say it like that? It will be found. Okay? And it'll attach itself to another of its own kind. And you'll say to yourself, is that how deadly pride is? If, if there's one thing I could ask God to remove me of everything today, I don't want him to remove all the enemies. I don't want him to remove anything. Take every bit of pride out of me. And you'll say, Brother Thorne, you don't know what you just asked. You're going to get skinned on the skinning board. What good is it to come and preach about a God that you've never got to experience? Okay? I don't know any mother in here that wants to give birth to a child and then all of a sudden never get to experience time with that child. Right? Amen? And you'll say, well, there's times when that situation happens. I understand that. Everything happens with a purpose. But what I'm telling you is this. God wants that experience. He wants you to have the experience of himself. And you'll say, well, how can the loss of a child, remember how I talked about that wounding, and how you can have a stronger relationship with Christ, and how everything works out to, the, to good for them that love the Lord. I don't want to see any young person pass away. I really don't. But I can tell you this. My wisdom doesn't even come close to his. And if he sees fit to take a child unto himself, that's his business and not mine. All I'm going to do is understand that grace is wrapping it. Grace is wrapping it. I don't know how many times he's going to have to go around this to hold me close, but grace is wrapping it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Separation unto him, being joined to another, being joined to life instead of death. What's feeding you? Are you connected to life? I'm going to be real honest, folks. Can I, can I just say this? I got a visual example here. See that bad boy right there? And you're saying, oh, you're going to preach against TV? You're going to preach against phones? You're going to preach against anything I love in my life? I ain't doing that at all. But I can tell you that this can have a good root system or a bad root system. And you'll say to yourself, Brother Thorne, you, you don't understand. It keeps me connected. I know it keeps you connected. Friend, hey, I got off Facebook about a year ago, I got hacked twice. First time I just thought, you know, well, we'll get that taken care of, okay? <laughs> got hacked again. See, I may look like I'm real stupid, but it don't take too many knot knots to the head that I realize, well, let's not do that again, okay? And so, you know what? I gave up that Facebook. There's great things about it. There is great things about it. It can be a very good ministry tool. It can be a, hey, what are my kids up to lately, you know, and I can be a part of my kids' life when they're completely out of state. Or it can be just a direct connection to that tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you're, you're, just, you're just thumbing through. What, what have I missed? Keep me connected. What have I missed? All I'm trying to say is, if we really want a connection, okay, you're going to say, is it painful to do without this thing? for a couple days, okay? Probably would be for a lot of people. I grew up in an era, I guarantee you there's a lot more in here, not just me, but I grew up in an era to where these, these wasn't there, okay? And you want to talk about family ties and family bonds, we used regular telephones and called people. And, you know, what I'm just trying to say is this. 
Use it carefully. Don't let that one root system I talked about, that prideful root system, that is always seeking, it's always searching, just trying to mate up with another piece of pride, okay? I know. I ain't got nothing good to say. I ain't. Nothing good to say. Hallelujah. But the root is holy, so are the branches. His divine nature flows through the roots and into the branches if we are connected. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Old roots, I was connected to this once, okay? It had me. Ever been connected to something that had you? Okay? Drugs. I've never been uh, hooked on any kind of drugs. Sleeping pills when I was young. Let me tell you a quick story. My mom, I love her to pieces. She had wallpapered my, house, uh, my room in Minter, Ohio with these light blue checkers and dark blue checkers. The whole wallpaper. To look at it, you'd almost get a headache. So I told her, I says, well, I'm having a hard time sleeping in the room. Now, I'm young. When I say I'm young, I'm real, real young, okay? And isn't the light supposed to be off while you're sleeping? So why does it matter? So she gave me a sleeping pill so I, I could go to sleep. Because, see, a lot of times parents don't want to deal with this, the root of the situation. They want to pacify just for today. We'll deal with it another day, but we're going to pacify with this little pill that will make you go to sleep, okay? I know none of you moms ever gave your babies NyQuil. I understand that. Okay? Okay? But what I'm saying is, all of a sudden, every evening, for some strange reason, I couldn't fall asleep. But mom got wise to my tricks. She was giving me vitamins after a while. I was the healthiest, couldn't go to sleep kid around. Okay? And I'm none the wiser because you know why? I'm connected to this little root system that helps me fall asleep, okay? My crutch, okay? That one thing I lean on when times get tough, okay? Anybody got a crutch in here? I know, I know. Hallelujah. But he's become a new creature. Behold, all things have become new. Bondage is attached to old things. Old things is where bondage is. And you'll say, well, Brother Thorne, man, I, I wish I could just be set free from this one particular thing. I don't know if anybody in here has ever had what you call bondage, whether it be mental bondage, spiritual bondage, whatever. And you'll think to yourself, oh, well, why can't I just get over this hurdle? Okay? It's an attachment to the wrong root system. Okay? Well, no, 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 no. You See, look at there. I peeled the bark away. Peeling the bark away does not remove the flow. You understand? It's a wounding, but trust me, that tree heals all on its own. Pride wraps it up real tight. Oh, we, we won't make it. That tree has one objective, to ruin you. Okay? It wants to destroy you. It wants to corrupt you. It wants your mind to be so wrapped up with things that don't matter, non-eternal things. Go back to that message two Thursdays ago, eternal versus temporal. Hey, it, that's what... That's what completely turned me upside down, grabbed me by my ankles and shook out all the loose change and said, hey, let's have a reset. Let's have a reset. Why don't we, why don't we just get rid of some stuff that you've been carrying with you, Brother Thorne? Let's have a reset. I needed that reset. Amen? I'm very close to closing. Very close to closing. Hallelujah. But the pruning process is to get that nasty pride out. Okay? The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The root... Excuse me, the roots support you and shape the whole tree. Folks, it'd be weird to tell you that a root system that you don't even get to see. Sometimes they'll poke their little heads up in the yard and you'll hit it with the mower blade. Okay? Anybody ever been there before? And then you got to go up to dad and say, I bent the mower blade, okay, because I didn't pay attention to that root that poked up. But that root system shapes everything above it. And you'll say to yourself, is it really that important? If you're having a hard time walking upright before your maker, and you're all bowed over because everything has got a hold of you that shouldn't have a hold of you, 
and you just don't even look like a good, healthy tree, okay? It is possible, okay, that the root system is not correctly connected to the right tree. You'll say, Brother Thorne, why, why you got to keep beating that thing to death? Because it is so subtle. It even looks, it was planted close to the other tree, right? It's in the same location. That means it's there to be a temptation for you, okay? And it wants to seek and find. It, it goes to and fro, so to speak, seeing who it can devour. Hallelujah. But the roots are supported, excuse me, that support you and shape you from, excuse me, the roots support you and shape the whole tree. The rootstock determines the overall size and the height of the tree. You'll say to yourself, I've been in this thing 20-some years. And, and, and this is an indictment to me. After 20-some years of being planted with him, wouldn't you think I'd have much height to me? <laughs> I'd, have, I'd at least have a lot of branches involved, right? And producing fruit like out of this world. <laughs> but I spent a lot of them years connected to the wrong root system. But I'm thankful now because, see, I got a revelation. That one tree can't offer me anything good. It says it does. It says it's got a whole lot of good. But I tell you what, it may taste good in the beginning, but man, as it's digested and as, as it's passed through, or the worst thing is, is it gets lodged in you. And it becomes that bitterness that just doesn't want to pass. Did you know you can't pass bitterness? <laughs> it won't pass. Bitterness is a lodging thing. It grabs a hold of everything it could possibly get a hold of and says, I'm staying the night. And you don't understand this, but I'm staying forever. But it just says the night. Okay, it's that one relative that shows up in town. It just says, I want to spend the night. And 10 days later, they're still sleeping on your sofa. Okay? That's what bitterness does. It don't want to pass. <laughs> Ooh, God. Ooh, God. Hallelujah. But the Jew and the Gentiles are one in Christ. Galatians 4 and 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. Neither is, excuse me, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I'm closing with this. See, them's the one words everybody's been waiting for. I am closing, okay? I want to talk about something that's going to take about four minutes, okay? I could try to even make it quicker than that. Relationships. I, without throwing too much laundry out there, okay, in 2011, I experienced a divorce, okay? A Christian divorce, okay? I don't know if you ever heard of one of those things before, but I experienced one, okay? And uh, I wanted to be healed before I attach myself to another. Does that make sense? Okay. And I kept giving God a time frame of my healing. Okay? Because that's what we do, right? I need to be healed by such and such time, Lord. Okay? But let me explain something to you about the healing process. When you're dealing with first being connected to bad root system, and then you're dealing with feelings and emotions and all these kind of things. I even, I even broke down one time and said, you know what, I'm going to give this gal a call. Okay? And I gave this gal a call. Because she, she had messed my mind up, Brother Tyler. She gave me a hug. I knew her from school, so I'd known, the, you know, and so there's that attachment there. And everything in me that's still connected to the old root system, is saying, press on. It's got that little hanky out. Press on. Okay? Attach yourself. Okay? Because I thought the root system that she had was worth attaching to. Okay? Okay? I know. I, well, I'm saying all the wrong things, aren't I? But I made one simple prayer. I said, Lord, 
And I was serious too. I was going down Route 48. I can take the exact place that I made that prayer. And I said, God, I said, I want to be real careful about what I attach myself to, okay? And I said, and I don't need any more wounds, okay, that take a long time to heal. Any, anybody hear a little bit what I'm saying? And I says, if this ain't the one, let it pass. And do you know it did? It passed quick like. Real quick like. Matter of fact, that door was shut pretty quick because thankfully, her root system was attached to another. Okay? And I'm so thankful. And you'll say to yourself, Brother Thorne, why would you even share this? Well, I'm saying this for this. I hate to see people go through things that they wouldn't have to go through except they made emotional decisions. Okay? Emotional decisions. Remember that message. Eternal temporal. You're going to check that message out. 415 of 21. Check that message out. Because see, it's going to help you make decisions and know where they're rooted from, those decisions. It can sound like the most holy thing in the world, you know? And, and it's the farthest thing from being connected to a holy root system. So, I thank the Lord for that opportunity, but does that stop that bad root system from trying to mess with this all the time? No, it don't. It's a daily, continual situation that I have to say to myself, what are you going to be attached to, Brother Thorne? Are you going to let your emotions? I, I voted this. Eventually, I'm going to get a dog, okay? And the reason why I'm going to get a dog is this. If it is an emotional attachment that I'm searching for, I can pet on a dog, love on a dog, all I want. Understood? And it doesn't have to have the root system that another may have coming with it. Okay? And you'll say, you think you can just escape that, that root system by getting a dog? I don't know. I've made, it, I've made her 10 years. This uh, December will be a full 10 years. And uh, Jesus is doing a pretty good job. And you'll say to yourself, you're bragging on yourself. God, no. Would I, share my empty, would I share my dirty laundry with you if I was doing such a great job? If I was doing such a great job, I'd be looking for a better root system instead of certain features and certain looks and certain everything. And you're thinking to yourself, how shallow can you be, Brother Thorne? That's what I ask myself. How shallow is the root system I'm looking for? Because shallow root systems don't make it in storms at all. They're called laydowns or blowdown trees, is what they're called. They look real good on sunny days. And then when that storm comes, you'll say to yourself, well, they, they just look so good. They look so healthy. What happened? They attached to the wrong root system. And so you'll say to yourself, Brother Thornton, you think somebody really needed to hear that? I believe. There's a lot of people out there in TV land right now. You need, you need to hear that one because I'm telling you right now, we say Jesus can be our everything until reality hits. And he's going to have to be your everything. He's going to have to be that root system you draw from day and night. Not just when it's convenient on a Sunday or on a Thursday. There's a root system that says, abide with me. Come abide inside of me. Let me show you something above all those things temporal things in this world. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. I want you to close your eyes if you would, please. I want you to be real honest with you and Jesus. Father, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that has a root connection problem, would you please talk to them about it? Would you please reveal to them all your love, your grace, your mercy, everything that abides in you and what they're trying to trade off for another and how it does never, it will never, ever, ever, ever satisfy the longing of the Spirit that you placed in us. I believe that there is a longing of Jesus to know you 
because he does but for you to know him like he knows you I don't want to be somebody that says I read my Bible X amount of times and I went to church and I paid my tithes and my offerings but I never got to know the old boy I was never really fully attached I wanted to play that two root system game to where I can draw from two separate trees and produce a really messed up fruit. Father, I don't want to draw from one tree but yours. The only sap I want running through me, you said if the roots be holy, the branches are holy. If the fruit comes from a holy root system, it's got to be a holy fruit. I'm tired of trying to draw from the wrong tree. If you would be so kind today to search each and every one of our hearts, search all those out there in TV land, and let them know that this is real, temporal versus eternal, and what's really going to matter at the end of the day. If I do this, is it really going to change somebody else's life for the better? Father, we thank and praise you for this day you've given us. You've been so more than kind. I mean, I mean more than kind. Thank you for your goodness and your mercies. And now we understand what the wounding process is all about and how that healing process of your grace winding us about. I'm asking for that right now, God. I'm asking that you would wind each and every person under the sound of my voice anyone that's hearing this message for the first time, let your grace, let it tightly hold this person. And you're saying, well, what, aren't you worried that it's going to be a little too tight for the wound? It'll be okay. Trust me, it'll be okay. You'll think he's choking the life out of you, but all he's doing is letting the right life flow through you. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. God richly bless you today. Amen, amen, and amen.